What are you? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Call me dad. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 treacherous advisors and mentors in movies. Now the real pain begins, Danny boy. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at some of the worst mentors and advisors ever to grace the silver screen. But these characters can't just be bad at their job. In order to be considered for this list, the advisor in question needs to intentionally manipulate, deceive, or outright betray the person they're supposed to be mentoring. I took you in. A nobody! I opened the doors for you. I showed you how the system works, the value of information, how to get it. A big time spoiler alert is now in effect. You're gonna get a Medal of Valor for this. I didn't shoot him. A room full of cops said you did. Number 10, Detective Alonzo Harris, Training Day. To protect the sheep, you gotta catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf, you understand? It's a classic dynamic. The veteran cop, unafraid of bending the rules, is paired with the by-the-book rookie. But in the end, the newbie comes to respect the bigger picture, the pursuit of justice. All right, listen, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Well, there's nothing just about Alonzo Harris. He claims to be teaching rookie Jake Hoyt how to survive police work in South Central LA. But every lesson, from smoking marijuana to stealing drug money, serves one crooked purpose. To see that Alonzo's debt to the Russian mob is paid. They gave Alonzo till tonight to pay up. But his name's still on the list, eh? Nobody thought he could get cash that big. When Jake refuses to play along, Alonzo arranges to have him killed. Talk about setting a bad example. I ain't gonna blast him or what? Huh? Number nine, John Milton, the Devil's Advocate. Who in their right mind, Kevin, could possibly deny the 20th century was entirely mine? Who can deny Al Pacino when he turns on the charm? In this flick, Pacino takes on the role of the most compelling smooth talker there is, Satan himself. Underestimated from day one. You'd never think I was a master of the universe now, would you? Keanu Reeves plays Kevin Lomax, a lawyer who catches the devil's eye following his successful defense of a child molester. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, is that it? Why not? His boss, John Milton, is everything you could hope for in a mentor. Charming, witty, smart, supportive, and inspiring. Don't ever let him see you coming. That's the gaff, my friend. You gotta keep yourself small. If only he weren't literally the devil, slowly corrupting Kevin using his classic recipe of temptation and free will. Satan's end goal? Getting his new protege to conceive the Antichrist with his own half-sister. Long hours is one thing, but that's asking too much of any employee. We negotiating? Always. Yes! Number eight, Sloan Wanted. Welcome to the fraternity. It's always nice to be able to measure things on the Morgan Freeman spectrum. On the mentor scale, Freeman's Detective Somerset is about as perfectly balanced a mentor as you could ask for. On the bottom end of that scale is Sloan. This gun you're holding is an Emanishi 17. It belonged to your father. He could conduct a symphony orchestra with it. And you're going to use it to kill the man who shot him down in cold blood. If there's one person you'd think you could trust, it would be the head of an organization of assassins that uses a magic loom of fate to dictate who they kill for the betterment of the world. After today, you will never set foot in here again. Why not? Because like an apostle, your task is not to interpret, but to deliver. You'd expect the organization to really vet a person before making them the leader. But nothing corrupts quite like self-preservation. And when the loom instructs Sloan to have fraternity members killed, himself included, he starts faking results for profit. Not a question of how. It's a question of what. Number seven, Palpatine, the Star Wars prequel trilogy. The power you give me, I will lay down when this crisis has abated. It hurts to think what that galaxy far, far away might have looked like had Anakin never been assigned to protect Palpatine. Your patience has paid off. While fans can certainly find flaws with the prequel trilogy, Senator, then Chancellor Palpatine makes for a convincingly duplicitous and masterful Sith Lord, pretending to have the best interest of the Republic in mind, 
and feigning concern for the well-being of those around him. Emotional manipulation is truly his greatest strength. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus, makes you stronger. His ultimate prize is Anakin. And the manner in which he pulled him over to the dark side by exploiting those close to him is definitely worthy of high praise. You're fulfilling your destiny, Anakin. Become my apprentice. Learn to use the dark side of the Force. Number 6. Obadiah Stane, Iron Man. I never had a taste for this sort of thing, but I must admit, I'm deeply enjoying the suit. Following the death of Tony Stark's parents, Obadiah Stane, Howard Stark's partner, helps Tony transition into adulthood and his new role at Stark Industries. How ironic, Tony! Trying to rid the world of weapons, you gave it its best one ever. Pepper! And now, I'm gonna kill you with it. It's always painful to see a mentor become an enemy, even more so when that person is a father figure. So, when Tony discovers that his company has secretly been selling weapons on the black market to terrorist groups, he never suspects the man he's come to love like family. Your father. He helped give us the atomic bomb. Now, what kind of world would it be today if he was as selfish as you? But Stain is revealed to have done a lot more than sell illegal weapons. He's also arranged to have Tony killed. And when that failed, he attempted to kill Tony himself in order to steal the Iron Man tech. I built this company for nothing! And nothing is gonna stand in my way. Number 5. Saruman, the Lord of the Rings franchise. Save your pity and your mercy! I have no use for it! As the White Wizard, Saruman should have known better than to mess with dark magical artifacts. For the very same reason that Gandalf refuses to wield the ring, Saruman succumbs to Sauron's offering. We must join with him, Gandalf. We must join with Sauron. As the leader of the Council of Wizards, he is considered to be one of the wisest, most respected, and most trusted figures in all of Middle-earth. So we can forgive Gandalf for not seeing through his deception. Together, my Lord Sauron, we shall rule this Middle-earth. Thankfully, Saruman doesn't finish the job of killing Gandalf, and the Grey Wizard has a chance to learn from his mistakes. It cannot be. On the other hand, Grima Wormtongue, advisor to King Theoden, is about the slimiest, most no-good advisor you could ask for. But at least he wears his treachery on his sleeve. You are banished forthwith from the Kingdom of Rohan, all its domains, under pain of death. Number 4. Elijah Price, Unbreakable. And one of us has made a gross error and wasted the other person's valuable time. Purpose. It's something everyone is searching for in life, including Elijah Price, comic book curator and type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta sufferer. It's a genetic disorder. I don't make a particular protein very well and it makes my bones very low in density, very easy to break. Elijah's physical limitations make him identify with the villains in comic books, and this leads him to find his purpose. He was born to be a villain. Now that we know who you are, I know who I am. I'm not a mistake. It all makes sense. But what is a supervillain without a superhero? Enter David Dunn, a man impervious to harm. Elijah encourages David to become the hero he's meant to be. And despite some initial trepidation, David eventually follows his new friend's advice. <laughs> Great. Elijah hasn't just met his match, he's actively created him, crafting a foe out of a friend. What David understands as encouragement is actually Elijah's attempt to turn him into his personal nemesis. You know what the scariest thing is? To not know your place in this world not know why you're here. Number 3. Jafar, Aladdin. How 
many times do I have to kill you, boy? Who's more trusting of others than children? For kids in the 90s at least, it seems safe to assume that Jafar probably taught them their first lesson in betrayal. Are you afraid to fight me yourself, you cowardly snake? A snake am I? Perhaps you'd like to see how snake-like I can be. He is so transparently evil that only someone so blissfully unaware and naive as the Sultan could have not seen it coming. Come to think of it, the Sultan kind of acts like a child. So maybe Jafar was his first lesson in deception too. Splendid, absolutely marvelous. Jafar is the definition of conniving, evil, and slimy, all wrapped in one. He'll stop at nothing to wrestle control of Agrabah from the poor Sultan, who sadly never sees the betrayal coming. But you're so old. The princess will marry me. Number two, Gordon Gecko, Wall Street. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Power is rarely held by those who prioritize the well being of others. It's a simple truth that Bud Fox, played by Charlie Sheen, probably wishes he'd known before he got involved with legendary Wall Street figure Gordon Gecko. Yeah, he's learning, huh? But he's learning. Blinded by ambition and in awe of his business idol, Fox will do anything Gecko asks, regardless of legality. I'm gonna make you rich, Bud Fox. Yeah, rich enough, you can afford a girl like Darian. This is your wake-up call, pal. Go to work. Too late. Fox sees Gecko for what he is, a ruthless corporate raider. But why do you need to wreck this company? Because it's wreckable, all right? I took another look at it and I changed my mind. Gecko intends to manipulate a deal brought to him by Fox, ultimately leaving Fox's own father and every employee at his company out of a job. It's all about bucks, kid. The rest is conversation. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, more in this case dishonorable mentions. Your talents lay elsewhere, Wendell. It's a muscle job. You'll do as I say and ask no questions. Do you follow my drift? Give me the mask, hero. He went in there to save you. That was his mistake. That the human race is out of gas. It's circling the drain. It's finished. The only thing that matters is grabbing what you can before somebody else beats you to it. Number one, Henri Ducard, Ra's al Ghul, Batman Begins. You know how to fight six men. We can teach you how to engage 600. Ducard took an angry young Bruce Wayne and gave him the tools to avenge the death of his parents, starting him on his journey to becoming Batman. But when put to the final test, Bruce refuses to adopt Ducard's harsh version of justice opting rather to destroy the temple and return to Gotham. You fear your own power. You fear your anger, the drive to do great or terrible things. Ducard is not simply the advisor to Ra's al Ghul. He is, and always had been, the true leader of the League of Shadows, the real Ra's al Ghul. No one can save Gotham. forest grows too wild, a purging fire is inevitable and natural. The assassins come to Gotham to complete their cleansing mission, pitting pupil against mentor in the process. And we're sure Bruce Wayne would tell you, nothing stings quite like finding out your mentor wants to destroy you and the city you vowed to protect. Your compassion is a weakness your enemies will not share. That's why it's so important. It separates us from them. Do you agree with our list? What treacherous mentor or advisor do you most love to hate? I'm not seriously gonna believe this man, are you? Are you? He isn't even from round here! For more sneaky top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It's two minutes to close, Gordon. What do you wanna do? Decide. Dump it. <laughs>